Welcome back. We are now in segment 8.10 and in this segment we will be discussing about uh, diversion of funds. Uh, a very important concept in working capital uh, management. As a banker this is something which you which you should always watch out for. Uh, especially uh, when you are extending working capital finance this is something which you which you should always watch out for. So uh, let us take an example. We, we discussed this example earlier actually. right? Uh, this is an example which we discussed earlier but uh, once again once again let us uh, have a review. So uh, suppose that you started a, a new bank, right? And you have only one depositor, right? You have only one depositor, and he has come and deposited hundred crores in your bank. It's a fixed deposit for three years, right? So you did not repay him till three years, okay? So some some rate of interest was assumed ten percent. Now, as a banker, what you did with this hundred crores was that you you lend this money to another company, right? And also assume that you have only one single uh, borrower, right? You have only one one depositor, and he, you have only one. Uh, customer, the one one uh, uh, a customer to whom you have, to whom you have lent the uh, advance. So this hundred crores was lent to this customer, but the the repayment period was fixed at seven years, right? Twenty eight quarterly installments at uh, seven years. Now we have a problem here. This is something we should discuss earlier. There is a mismatch here, right? So after three years, this depositor will be coming back for his hundred crores, and we are asking asking his hundred crores, right? Uh, we don't have the money because we lent it to the borrower. To the advance party, so we go to the borrower and asking, give me back, give me back my hundred crores. The problem is even he doesn't have this hundred crores because that hundred crores was uh, invested in some uh, fixed assets. Like that hundred crores is now in the form of land, building, mission, some fixed asset. Okay, it's not in the form of liquid cash. So again, this example uh, uh, is a hypothetical example, but uh, but it, it highlights a very important point which we have, which we have been uh, high, uh, which we have been stressing uh, right throughout this course. Short-term funds should never be utilized for long-term uses. Right, this is something which you should always. I remember just just remember this uh, very important like short term funds should never be utilized for long term uses this is the problem uh, that arises when you when you do that when short term funds are used for long term uses there will be a uh, liquidity pressure right we call this liquidity pressure funds mismatch for uh, crunch funds crunch you know whatever it is basically it's liquidity pressure you can you can translate this example to the to a real life company a company for example uh, for example as a banker if you uh, lent OCC, OCC funds. This is for a short term uh, purpose, right? You have lent this money to to for the company to borrow, maybe uh, to purchase raw material or, or for just a short term purpose. Now, if this company goes and put these funds in some long term uh, users, say for example, it has purchased some land, you know, it's into real estate or some purchase some shares. Though you might argue that shares are technically not uh, long term, I mean, you can uh, redeem them at any point of time, but We'll we'll come to that later, but uh, land or shares or investment in group companies, right? Sister companies. So, if the company dumps this money in in uses which are predominantly long term, in the sense that we 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 don't know, uh, it's it's not that easy to get back those funds, right? Uh, uh, so in that case, uh, will there be a liquidity mismatch? This is something which you should never encourage, right? So before we get there, uh, we said that NWC should not be a negative, right? This is something which you all agree upon. So NWC should be positive. So how much? Right. This is again a, a different question. So NWC uh, should it be positive 10 lakhs or 20 lakhs or one crore? What is it? So refer back to our pre previous discussion where we where we discussed about the working capital, uh, the current ratio, uh, and other related aspects. NWC. Uh, the minimum NWC stipulated by banks uh, depends on the limits, right? For large limits, maybe they have they can have a current ratio of 1.33. Right. For some banks maybe 1.25. For, for smaller limits, it will be 1.15. So uh, this this is something which which is stipulated by the banks. And the minimum NWC. When we are saying NWC should should not should be positive. Uh, how much? At least at least what is the minimum NWC? This is a concept which we discussed earlier. Please recall that that minimum NWC. Right. If you recall, we said some 25 percent of current assets or 13 percent of current assets. Right. It varies from bank to bank. Okay. So this comes from here. So how much should the NWC should be minimum? NWC should never be negative. Agreed. It should be positive. How much? What should be the minimum NWC? It comes from the discussion we had earlier. Okay. So from that again, the minimum NWC, the, the minimum current ratio uh, comes in. So ideally, right? Let us speak of a very ideal scenario. Ideally, you want uh, you want uh, your current liabilities to be zero. If NWC is current assets minus current liabilities, you always want as a, as a company from a company company's point of view, you want this to be zero. Why you want this to be zero? It means you need not pay anybody in the next one year. This is a very comfortable situation. In the next one year, you have no pending payments to be made. You only have funds coming in, right, from the sales. 
here all short term sources are coming whereas there is no pending payments this is a very ideal scenario the problem is that this doesn't uh, happen in practice right so what what happens in practice so there will be some current liabilities and 20 30 but right? depending on the size of the company uh, some current liabilities will be there as a banker you want these current liabilities to be at term at such a level that it doesn't make nwc look bad right there should there, there should be some minimum nwc in the system so that minimum nwc you can calculate so we earlier said that the minimum current ratio if you refer to the academic textbooks okay uh, they will be stipulating as 2 uh, the logic being even if the current uh, even if the current ratio is current assets by current liabilities let's say for example this is 200 lakhs by 100 lakhs 2 so academic textbooks uh, prescribe a minimum current ratio of 2 the logic being even if the current assets the value of the current assets were to fall by 100 percent right for example this has to for example it drops by 100 percent and, and it's just there. the realizable value of current assets is only 100 lakhs still you will be able to uh, meet the current liabilities that is a that is only logic uh, but in practice uh, uh, banks follow a more flexible approach uh, the minimum current ratio uh, stipulated will be 1.33 right uh, for, for large projects okay uh, for small projects it could be 1.15 it could be 1.25 again this should you should be reflecting your bank uh, loan policy guidelines right so how do how do banks uh, actually find out whether a company has utilized uh, uh, short term funds right how does a company how does a bank uh, find out whether a company has utilized short term funds for long term uses right this is nothing but diversion of funds right uh, utilization of short term funds for long term users so how, how as a banker as a creator so how are you going to find out given a balance sheet how are you going to find out whether uh, there was diversion of funds this is a very important point because you should be knowing as a banker whether the company has has engaged in diversion of funds then you can take corrective action right but, but first of all you should know whether a company has uh, diverted the short term funds to long term users so let us see how how you're going to find out the starting point you might you might uh, uh, get an idea that why not why not just check the increase in current assets compare it with the increase in bank finance right so what i'm saying is uh, in 2013, right? In 2013, that is the last year. Okay, last year when the company has come for renewal or enhancement, uh, the current assets was uh, say 100 lakhs. Okay, and the 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 OCC at that time was uh, 20 lakhs. Okay, okay. And, okay. Now now in the current year, okay, the company has this is the present year. Okay, then now the company has come for again uh, enhancement. Since then, so last year you have enhanced the limit, right? To say 40 lakhs okay so last year the company the existing limit was 20 lakhs the company has approached for enhancement to 40 lakhs and you have sanctioned as the bank you have enhanced the limit so in 2014 now the the balance sheet is available to you and you see you found that the current assets is 120 lakhs okay so so what i what i'm saying is of funds is nothing but utilization of short term funds to long term users we we want as a banker our funds that is the OCC funds to be utilized only for short term uh, uses no long term purposes like land and other other long term purposes they that the company should not use we want our funds to be utilized only for short term uses okay so let us find the difference right let us let us find the difference and you you found that the difference was enhancement the occ limit was, was enhanced by 20 lakhs 40 minus 20 so during this one year period right the occ was enhanced additional uh, short term funds to extend to 20 lakhs was, was available to the company so now you see the increase in current assets the current assets is 20 lakhs this is short term users isn't it uh, investment in this uh, uh, current investment in current assets is short term users nothing wrong with it so the company has got 20 lakhs of additional short term funds short term funds and the the short term uses has increased by 20, the the short term uses the current assets has increased by 20 lakhs so there doesn't seem to be in diversion of funds because as per the definition we said the short term funds should not be diverted for long term uses had this been had this been 110 lakhs right then you then you, you can say uh, see we have enhanced the OCC by 20 lakhs whereas the current assets has increased only by 10 lakhs so that the remaining 10 lakhs you have uh, used it somewhere else because this is short term uses short term uses you spend only 10 lakhs the 10 lakhs maybe you have diverted Th then you can say but in this case it seems to be okay this announcement was 20 lakhs and the increase in current assets was 20 lakhs so 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 can i can i say like this if increase in current assets is greater than increase in bank finance right then no diversion right alternatively if increase in current assets is less than increase in bank finance 
then there is diversion okay so so i'm just putting this proposition to you so is this acceptable so can we write like this so just now we seen a simple simple example uh, where we seen that the increase in cc was 20 lakhs the current assets increase is 20 lakhs right so i think we have to slightly modify this uh, or equal to right okay so in the earlier case we said this is 20 lakhs and this is 20 lakhs so no, no diversion of funds is this okay so the first point you have to understand when delivery diversion of funds is this is not okay this is uh, not not acceptable you can't uh, have a, a definition for diversion of funds based on this because the increase in bank finance is not the only short term source right the increase in uh, bank finance is not the only short term source there are other sources Pri primarily the most important short term sources besides bank finance is creditors the raw material suppliers so what if what if the scenario actually was right the scenario actually was last time last year current assets was 100 cc was 20 now we are saying in 2014 uh, current assets increased 120 cc was 40 so no diversion of funds but actually the position was there was another component called creditors it was 10 last time and now it is 40 so actually if you see the total short term sources the increase in short term sources so during this one year period what is the short term sources the additional short term sources the company was able to obtain 20 lakhs from the bank announcement 30 lakhs from the raw material suppliers so total 50 lakhs was the short term sources the additional short term sources the company was able to obtain during this one year whereas the company has in the short term uses the company has used only 20 lakhs in the short term uses the balance 30 lakhs has gone somewhere let us let us not deal with where it has gone at the moment for the, for the moment out of the 50 lakhs the company the short term sources out of the 50 lakhs the short term sources the company was able to obtain it was able to utilize only 20 lakhs towards the intended purpose the intended purpose is short term uses that is the current assets increase in current assets is only 20 lakhs so there is diversion of funds this is the point you need to remember you, you, you straight away cannot see the difference in current assets between two years ca1 and ca2 last year current assets this time this year current assets and you see okay and then you compare the bank uh, cc straight away you can't compare these two because there is another component called creditors right so the correct way is it's not just uh, occ so all the short term sources so now we'll modify like this if increase in current assets right is greater than or equal to increase in not just bank finance but also creditors then no diversion of funds okay alternatively right if increase in current assets is less than right increase in bank finance plus creditors then there is diversion okay so this is a, a slightly improved and a better uh, a way of uh, dealing with diversion of funds uh i'll i'll make one final modification to this bank finance creditors yes these are short term funds but they could be other some some other short term funds also right these are the i agree this is the these these two are the major uh, short term funds available to the company but they could be other say for example this is some 80% 90% they, they could be some 5 or 10% other uh, uh, short term funds so i'll just add plus others some other short term funds now all these short term funds put together what are all this this bank finance creditors and all this aren't all this uh, uh, liabilities because the source of fund is a liability and not just any uh, not, not just any any type of liability these are current liabilities isn't it what are all this all these are current liabilities the bank finance creditors and the other current liabilities right so so what essentially we're saying is if the increase in current assets is greater than increase in current liabilities there is no diversion of funds right we 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 are now we are now are coming to a simplified formula if the increase in current assets is greater than or equal to increase in current liabilities it implies there is no diversion of funds alternatively if this is less than then there is diversion of funds right clear what is this increase in current assets greater than increase in current liability is, is can we can we can we write like increase in current assets minus uh, increase in current liabilities greater than equal to zero right is just a uh, flipping right you flip this this side increase in current assets say for example 120 this is 
So we can say 120 is greater than or equal to 100 is greater than or the difference that is 120 minus 100 the 20 is greater than 0 both are same right. So if this if this was 120 this is 130 right the difference would be less than 0 okay. So this you can modify like this increase in current is minus current liability greater than 0 this implies no diversion of funds alternatively if this is less than 0 then that definitely implies diversion of funds. Now recall the, the discussions we had in our earlier segments. What is this increase in current assets minus current liabilities? What is what is current assets minus current liabilities? What is current assets minus current liability? It is nothing but NWC. So when I'm saying increase in current assets minus current liabilities, all, in the, all that I'm asking is what is the increase in NWC? This entire thing translates to increase in NWC. So finally we can say in a very simple way if there is increase in NWC, there is no diversion of funds, right? If there is decrease in NWC, there is diversion of funds. Finally, we arrived at a, a simplified formula for uh, diversion of funds. So the next time when you see a balance sheet, if you want to see whether whether during the last one year there was diversion of funds, take the figures of the two years, calculate NWC of this year. This you can calculate current assets minus current liabilities. Add up all the current assets, add up all the current liabilities, find the difference. This is the NWC. Similarly, find NWC for this year, current assets minus current liabilities. You find the difference of this NWC. NWC between two years. And then you see whether it's increased or decreased. If it has increased, there is no diversion of funds. If it has decreased, it implies diversion of funds. Okay. Now I will I will qualify this statement. Uh, I will qualify this statement later. Shortly, very shortly, I will I'll qualify this statement. Okay. This statement needs to be qualified. Okay. Uh, the statement needs to be qualified. Whenever NWC decrease, don't don't say it's diversion of funds. I will qualify this. Just wait for a, a couple of minutes. But but this is the broad idea, right? The broad idea is you take the NWC figure of two years and see whether it is increased or decreased. From from then we can uh, take a decision whether there was diversion of funds or not. Okay. So let us take a, a couple of examples. So the, there are four there are four scenarios here. So two years last year this year. Okay, so 2011. This is the position of current. E each scenario. This is scenario one. Okay, in scenario one, the current assets was 1200 last year. Current liability is 8 here, so NWC is 400. This year, if you see the NWC was 550, 1300 minus 750. So NWC has increased. Okay. Similarly, in scenario three, NWC has increased. Okay? In the remaining two scenarios, NWC has decreased. So, so if you want to see the diversion of funds, this is how you calculate. Okay, a very simple calculation. You calculate NWC for both the years and see and see whether the NWC has increased or not. So in the first scenario. Uh, for the first company, the NWC, there is increase in NWC, so there is no diversion of funds. Third scenario also, there is no diversion of funds, right? Uh, second and fourth scenarios, NWC has decreased, so so we need to investigate. I'm not saying there is there is diversion of funds. I'll just call for my statement, okay? I said I will call for my statement. So so we need to investigate whether there is diversion of funds or not. I'll tell you shortly, okay? But these two scenarios, we need to investigate further, okay? Uh, also, there is one more point that you need to uh, remember. In in our, in our earlier discussion of NWC and current ratio, we said that these, these two are highly correlated. Uh, current ratio and and we said both both one and the same in the in the sense that this is current assets minus current liabilities. This is current assets by current liabilities. So basically, they are measuring the same thing, right? One is in absolute terms in rupee term. Current assets minus current liabilities is the ratio, okay, with no units, right? Uh, but but basically, they 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 they, they, they sort of uh, tell you the same thing, right? What is the margin? What is the uh, what is the what proportion of the the uh, what proportion of the current assets are being financed by long term sources? The basically they, they say the same. So when I when I'm saying this uh, since and we also if you remember we said that uh, uh, if NWC is greater than zero, current ratio current ratio will be greater than one. If NWC is equal to zero, current ratio will be exactly one. If NWC is less than zero, recall this current ratio will be less than. This we said. This is very simple to. This is, this is very simple, right? So if current uh, assets is 120, current assets is 100, current liabilities is 110. So what is NWC? 120 minus 100. This is positive. This also means that current assets by current liability, the current ratio will be 1.2 by 1.1. Something for, something greater than one. So this is this is very simple to prove. Okay? Can we? So what we said that and if NWC is greater than zero, right? The change in NWC. Okay. The change in NWC is greater than zero. There is no diversion of funds. So can we? Can we not say that? A change in current ratio is greater than zero in the sense that increase improvement in current ratio current ratio it implies no diversion of funds all right can we say that so let us see an example okay 
so you can see the first scenario so in the first and third scenarios here the current ratio has increased so I'll replicate the same figure the same figures which we had earlier instead of calculating NWS now I'm calculating current ratio and again we are arriving at the same conclusion the first and third cases NWC the current ratio has increased in the earlier uh, a case where we considered NWC these two cases NWC has increased okay and in the second and fourth cases NWC has decreased uh, earlier right now current ratio is decreased so simply can we say that no diversion of funds if, if NWC is increased or current ratio is increased both are one and the same there is diversion of funds if NWC has decreased or current ratio is decreased can we say that no we cannot okay so there's a slight uh, mathematical uh, issue involved here but uh, ratios are tricky okay so you should understand that ratios are uh, can be very tricky uh, they can be misleading they appear to be uh, th this is this seems to be perfectly logical uh, but doesn't work that way okay especially if the numbers become very large if current assets and current liabilities right if your current assets and current liabilities uh, basically run into a large number some thousands of lakhs you know you know that you you will find some um, uh, funny things happening. So don't don't go by current 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 uh, ratio. Always go by NWC. Okay. Uh, though both are one and the same. I told you this earlier. Both are one and the same. But if you want to measure diversion of funds, always go with NWC. Check whether the NWC has increased or not. Not current ratio. Because I'll give you an example where current ratio has decreased. Current ratio has decreased, but NWC has increased. That can happen. Let's see this example. This is a very pecu peculiar peculiar. So th these uh, these sort of things do happen. Okay. So here. Uh, last year the current assets was 1200 1, 1200 current liability so your NWC is 400 okay so now in this year current assets 1300 885 is the current liability so what is the 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 current uh, the NWC is 415 so actually NWC has increased by 15 lakhs but actually if you calculate the current ratio last year it is 1.5 1200 by 800 this year is 1.47 so current ratio has decreased so they there can be instances where current ratio has decreased Whereas NWC is positive, the increase in NWC is positive. So, so don't don't go don't go by uh, current ratio. It can be tricky, right? Follow follow NWC. So always always uh, rely on uh, the change in NWC. If if NWC change in NWC greater than zero, there is no diversion of funds. What if it is less than zero? Let us see. So here, take these uh, three scenarios here. So NWC has decreased in all the three scenarios. Okay. So we earlier uh, said that decrease in NWC could point to diversion of funds right uh, let us see so look at the first case let, let us try to see the current ratio right so during this year some uh, short term funds were definitely uh, used for long term uses I, I would not use the word diverted but diverted is a, a pretty strong word I will, I will just say that because NWC has decreased why NWC has decreased you can see this uh, earlier it was 500 now it is uh, 475 okay so NWC has decreased okay minus 25 NWC has decreased no doubt so so we can say that some short term uh, sources of funds were used I'm not say diverters were used for long term uh, uses so is this serious now that, that is what you should ask as a banker is, is, the, is this serious right they have used definitely short term sources were used for long term uh, uses but uh, is, is the extent uh, serious enough so that you'll find out by the current ratio you see here even though the company has used the short-term sources for long-term uses in spite of that the current ratio is still healthy at 1.42 and we spoke of for large company the minimum current ratio should be 1.33 right so 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 even so so diversion is not a, a an appropriate term here it appears it appears uh, that prima facie there's diversion of funds but actually this is not a because please use the word diversion of funds very sparingly okay uh, because it's a serious uh, issue okay so just because NWC has decreased doesn't mean that the, there is diversion of funds because still still the current ratio is healthy at 1.42 right alternatively if you calculate the minimum NWC right current ratio is healthy what is what what do you mean by current ratio is greater than 1.33 it means that there is minimum NWC available in the system right there is minimum NWC available in the system. We, we know the how to calculate the minimum NWC, right? Earlier we, we saw 25% of current assets, something. For small companies, maybe 13% of current assets, whatever it is. The, that minimum NWC which bank has stipulated is available in the system. So you cannot blame the company, right? What the company is doing in this case is, it has got some excess investment in inventory maybe, equivalent to four months of consumption it's holding. And now a new management comes, a new CEO comes and says, this, this is ridiculous, we, we should not be holding so much. I mean, let us, let us not hold so much, right? Three months is sufficient for our operations three months is sufficient so let us bring down this investment in current assets 
Well, let us reduce our investment in current assets because excess investment in current assets is also not uh, excess investment in current assets. It is it is not beneficial to the company. It is not beneficial. Right? There should be something called optimum level of investment in current assets. Yes, you don't want the the the, the raw material stock to be uh, one month or point five month. Yes, there will be stock out situations, right? But at the same time, you don't want four months, five months, you know, because that will be uh, meaning that unnecessary funds are funds are blocked in the uh, raw material. Right? That that is unnecessary blockage because it's not uh, is not going to earn anything to the company, right? This this by reducing the raw material stock from four months to three months, that that money which you get, you can invest in some productive purposes, even if not for current assets, right? Say for example, you you can you can uh, uh, say for example you can invest in some mutual funds. So as a banker, you might raise your eyebrows and say, okay, this company has reduced the NWC and diverted this to long term. to some uh, a share market capital market but this is not normally acceptable in in sina normal scenarios but but in spite of this in spite of doing this the current ratio is healthy that that is the point see the the the, the minimum nwc is available in the system so this is something which you can accept the company is saying there is there, there is no fun in uh, maintaining so much inventory our funds are being blocked in excess inventory we want to reduce it to an optimum level and that funds will you utilize it to some other avenue it could be long term uses but it is going to earn some income to us if this if this money is blocked in raw material it's not going to earn us anything okay so 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 now we will we'll have a very clear definition of uh, uh, diversion of funds so check the change in nwc what is change in nwc nwc of the uh, present year actual year minus nwc of the previous year this is something which you all, all, always do right so if you have the 2013 balance sheet available with you you check the what is the nwc for 2012 last year What is the NWC for this year? You find the difference. That is the change in NWC. Okay. So if this change is greater than zero, right? It means that there is no diversion of funds. Straight away we can say greater than or equal to. Okay. Greater than or equal to. Right. However, if this is less than zero, right? Then you have two two scenarios. Then you have to check whether the the current ratio, right? Is the so you have to check whether the the current ratio. So is the current ratio. Uh, greater than that minimum norm, whatever for your bank, right? It could be one point two five, it could be one point three three. For your bank, what is the minimum current ratio? Is this current ratio of the company in the present year? Current ratio of the present year, okay? In two thousand thirteen, okay? Is this greater than the minimum? Right? If it is minimum, then there is no diversion of funds, right? If it is minimum, then there is no diversion of funds. However, if the current ratio is less than that minimum norm, whatever it is. Then it means there is diversion of funds. So when you are dealing with diversion of funds, this is what you have to do. Whenever you get a balance sheet, calculate the change in NWC between the previous year and the current year. You will get the some value you will get, right? Then you calculate the current ratio for the present year, right? And you see that is the current ratio above the minimum uh, prescribed norm as per your policy guidelines. Say for example, uh, the current ratio is one point three three as per your bank norms. So you got one point four at NWC. Change in NWC was negative. NWC has decreased compared to previous year. But even in spite of that, current ratio is above the minimum norm. So don't say there is diversion of funds. Okay, that's 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 okay, right? The company is just shedding some excess uh, inventory. Okay, but if the current ratio is less than minimum norm, then there, there is definitely definitely diversion of funds, right? So this is the, uh, the so this is the 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 methodology you have to follow to check whether there is diversion of funds or not. So that is for your uh, actual financials. So if you have a balance sheet on your hand. You can check whether there is a diversion of funds during the last uh, compared to 2012 and 13 during the last year. Check this NWC. Now you find this NWC. We can check whether there is diversion of funds or not during the last year. Okay. Now let us come to projections. Right. As a as a banker, you are more interested in projections because uh, okay, this is this is important. This is no doubt important. Uh, but then the company will be presenting same data if it comes for renewal or enhancement this year. It will definitely be submitting uh, projected financial statements. So 2013 balance sheet is available. 2012 last year is available. You you found out whether there is diversion of funds or not. Okay, that's 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 okay. That's one part. Now for the 2014 for this year, now the company is projecting uh, financial statements 2014-15. Two years same data is given. It's projecting some NWC and some current ratio. Now from this, can you find out whether there is diversion of funds or not? Yes, you can. Same logic. So 2013 balance sheet is available. This is the actual figure. 2000 NWC say is 140 lakhs, right? This is the actual NWC of 2013. Then you check the 2014 NWC. This is the projected financial. So you'll have all items: P and L account balance sheet, current assets, current liabilities. So you see the projected NWC. Projected NWC says, say, say for example, 120 lakhs. Then it means that because there is a 
uh, the company is projecting some uh, decrease in NWC and the projected current ratio is less than one say 1.10 right it's less than 1.33 then you can say the company's uh, uh, then you can say there will be diversion of funds in the next year now the funny part is uh, you might ask why would a company do this uh, why, why would a company project right actuals is okay actuals is the audit balance sheet maybe the company uh, maybe these are figures which could not be changed they could be changed they could not be changed whatever it is it depends on the relation with the author but anyway uh, these are given figures but in the projections why would anybody do like this I mean if the NWC is 140 this year why would a company project uh, a lower NWC and raise questions from the bank you know uh, no come uh, that is the point right no company would do this right? this is this this is something which no company will do this right if the current the, see, the, see the companies are smart companies know what to do if the minimum NWC is 1.33 right Companies will ensure this CMD is in such a way that this current ratio will be one point greater than one point three three. Right? They no company will project uh, NWC below the minimum minimum required NWC. Or in other words, no company will project uh, current ratio uh, one point one zero one point uh, two below uh, the minimum norm. But they know bank knows better than uh, bank officers. You know? So if if the if the norm says the one point three three, they will prepare the CMD in such a way that the projected NWC is one point uh, greater than one point three three. So this scenario will not arise. Where the actual NWC is 140 lakhs and projected NWC is 120 lakhs, current ratio is less than 1.33, they won't do that. So this scenario won't arise. But then, but then, the com so so what the company will do? The company will 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 provide an inflated a uh, 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 a rosy picture of a current. It will say like this. Say the current ratio is say 1.25. Now now the current ratio will improve to 1.50. The company will say this. So the company has come to come for renewal. So you as a banker are checking whether you can uh, enhance the limits or not. So you check the, the NWC for this year and the previous year. You found that there was diversion of funds. You found that there was some diversion of funds. So you ask the company, see this is a serious issue, there was diversion of funds. You also calculate the current ratio for 2013 to be uh, 1.25. So you ask the company. Now, now the company is coming for enhancement of limits. So you ask the company. See last year there was diversion of funds. The current ratio presently two point, at, the, at the current year is 1.25 that is below 1.33. Your situation is not good. Now, how can we enhance the limit? Then the company will say, you see the projected financial figures. See a projected financial figures. For the next year, our NWC will increase to 180 lakhs, 1.5. The company will always project uh, financials like this. It will say, there will be improvement. Current ratio will improve from 1.25 to 1.5. Now, should you accept the CMA data? Right? No company will project a, a scenario where the current ratio will stay at 1.25 or come down to 1.25. It will always say it will improve. How it will improve? They, they will say, Current ratio will improve from 1. Point, next, next year, sir, will improve to 1.5. Now, as a credit officer, this, this is a scenario which you will always encounter, right? In cases where the current ratio is less than the minimum norm, say 1.33 is the norm, existing current ratio says less than 1.33. Company will always project a CMA data that NWC will increase, that the current ratio will improve to 1.5 or something. As a bank officer, what you should check is, this is where, as a bank officer, you should step in. Right? You should ask how how is the NWC going to improve from 140 to 180 lakhs? This this 40 lakhs which the company is projecting, the increase in NWC. What are the sources from where where is the company going to improve the NWC? That is your job as a bank officer. Your your job is not to see whether the projected and projected and current ratio is greater than 1.33. It will it will always be greater than 1.33. That is how the company's auditors will project the same data. There is no fun as a bank officer to check whether the projected and projected current ratio is greater than 1.33. Th that is not the basis on which you are going to enhance the limits because the projections are projections projections can be made anyway uh, as you wish right if the norm is 1.33 the company has projected a current ratio of 1.5 there is no, nothing great about it now you as a bank officer you should ask how this NWC of 40 lakhs is going to materialize what are the sources now you have to dig deeper into the CM data you have to dig deeper into CM data and find out how, how is the company going to improve the NWC what are the sources for increase in NWC let us do that now so to see this example so this is the actual NWC Right, 1800 minus 1440. So current ratio is 1.25. Now the company is coming for enhancement of the limit and it's projecting a current ratio of 1.4. Okay, so now you have to you have to drop a statement something called build up of NWC or movement of NWC and find out how this uh, NWC is going to be improved. What are the sources? 
So we said that what is NWC basically? Current assets minus current liabilities. So let us assume that the CMA data uh, submitted by the company is as follows. Okay, this is the CMA data projected by the company projections. Right, this is the actual as per the 2013 audit balance sheet. This is the projection 2014 next year. The CMA data pro provided by the company. We are not uh, we have not uh, furnished in the CMA actual format. This is the uh, extract. This is the ba uh, basic figures which we require for this exercise. So last year the NWC. If you see if you add up the uh, current assets. And the current liabilities, you'll find that NWC last year was 360 lakhs. Okay, and current ratio is 1.25. Now the company is projecting the current ratio to be 1.5, right? 1.40, uh, and NWC is going to be 750. So the company is saying our NWC will increase from 360 lakhs to 750 lakhs. So you ask as a banker, how how is it going to increase, right? So this is what we have to do. So what you need to do is you you find out all the long term sources. You break up sources. You break your long term sources. What are the, all the long-term sources? You find out all these long-term sources. So, what are long-term sources? These are uh, these are uh, sources of funds which need not be paid within the next year. These are not current liabilities. Okay, these are long-term liabilities. So, what, what could be long-term sources? In the second we discussed earlier, right? Your share capital is something is a long-term in nature, right? Uh, bank term loans, not CC. Okay, term loans are long-term in nature. Unsecured loans are long-term in nature. So, any any source of funds which the company doesn't have an obligation to pay within the next one year is a long-term source. So, you write down all the long-term sources. Okay, then you write down all the long-term uses. Long-term uses are right uh, your uh, uh, fixed assets, right net block increase, uh, non-current assets. That's investment in sister firms and or any other long-term non-current assets. Okay, uh, or deposits, for example. Deposits in the sense that not fixed deposit deposits for uh, say for example uh, electricity department you have to uh, pay some deposit right so that is that is something that will be blocked for some time for some years it will be blocked okay so those sort of things okay so you add up all the long term sources you add up all the long term uses and then you find the difference okay okay the company is saying we will not bring any share capital the company is saying we'll earn a profit of fifty or rather we'll retain a profit of fifty lakhs from our operations. The company is also saying this is a long term, so it's actually decreasing. So there's a repayment. It seems it looks like the company has a, a term loan borrowed sometime uh, in the past, and now uh, the repayment has started. So the company has to make a hundred lakhs repayment in this year. So that is a uh, actually is a long term use, but or or alternatively you can uh, say it's a negative figure of uh, in the long term sources. Either way, okay. And then the company is saying we are going to raise one forty lakhs unsecured loans. Last year, unsecured loans, were, unsecured loans was only two crores. Now it's going to increase to three point four crores. So the company is saying we raised unsecured loans from uh, from fr from our friends and relatives to one forty lakhs. So put together, the long term sources all are ninety lakhs. So let us see the long term uses. Last year, the fixed assets was thousand lakhs. Now it's nine hundred. Uh, this doesn't mean that uh, the company is selling hundred lakhs of uh, asset. This could be depreciation. Okay, so hundred lakhs is depreciation. Investment is sister from last year. The company had an investment of 200, 200 lakhs in the in a group company. Now the company is saying we'll get back the amount. So we are not we are no more going to invest in that firm. We are going to get back our uh, fund. That, so that will release some two crores into the system. So that is the, that is what the company is saying, right? So essentially, what the company is saying is the inflows will be will will get some fifty lakhs profit from this year operations, right? We are going to raise one forty lakhs from uh, uh, from a friends and relatives on securities. We we also are going to withdraw our uh, investment in the group from two hundred lakhs. Okay, uh, this fifty lakhs is just uh, profit after tax. Okay, uh, since we said this hundred lakhs uh, uh, is depreciation, you have to add back the depreciation, isn't it? Because depreciation is a non-cash uh, expenditure. This we discussed uh, when we uh, talked about depreciation. Okay, so fifty lakhs is the book book profit. One fifty lakhs will be the cash profit. You add back the de because depreciation is a non-cash item. So the company is basically saying these are the these are the Sources of funds, long-term sources. So you add up this, you'll get to 490. What then? The company is saying, right? The 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 long-term use, the long-term, uh, the long-term so uses we have for the for the next year is only uh, basically a, a repayment of term loan. That is our uh, 100 lakhs. We have to repay our 100 lakhs. That's the only thing. That's what the company is saying. No other uh, long-term uh, use, isn't it? Right. So this is only hundred lakhs. So what the company is saying is, in the next year, right, from this year to the next year, during this one year period, we are going to, uh, we are going to get long term sources of four hundred ninety lakhs. We are going to get funds, long term funds of four hundred ninety lakhs. Whereas our long term uh, uh, users of funds is only hundred lakhs. So we'll be having a surplus of three hundred ninety lakhs. This three hundred ninety lakhs will be using for short term uses. Okay, because the long term users are only hundred lakhs. 
whatever is the surplus whatever is the surplus these 39 lakhs will be using for long term short term uses like uh, say for example the, your, this is nothing but investment in current assets right so this will increase your nwc so how, what the company how the company is projecting in nwc increase in nwc last year the current ratio was 1.25 now it is 1.40 the company is saying will improve our current ratio like this we are going to have surplus of 390 lakhs from the long term uh, long term portion that is our, our long term funds are going to be more by 390 lakhs compared to the long term users so they will have a surplus of 390 lakhs right that 390 lakhs will be using in the short term users okay now as a bank you have to question each and every item so company each and every item of that uh, the surplus the 390 lakhs which you obtain right you have to you have to question each and every item that is the that is the duty as a, as a credit officer okay company is saying we will we'll get a profit of 50 lakhs can the company really generate that profit look back look back uh, for the two three years uh, profitability what is what is the what is the range of profits for this company is it just 10 to 15 lakhs now the company is saying we'll project we are, we are going to get 50 lakhs uh, is it achievable right basically th basically things this is a story right this is a story the company is trying to tell a story our current ratio is not as per the mark right we, we are going to increase it to the your norm bank norm how we are going to do this this is the story we are telling so many we are going to get profit we are going to raise unsecured loans we are going to get uh, uh, investment from a group from uh, so so many things the company is saying right so many things the company is saying now you are you are questioning each and everything take this part and question it really can the company generate 50 lakhs profit against this background of see the last two three years profits okay also check the profit in the industry as a whole how are the companies of similar size peer group peer group okay how are the companies of similar size at this come operating the operating in the same industry uh, performing is the industry in a downward trend you know right so so the many many various factors that you need to consider and see that whether the company can really achieve this projected profit of 50 lakhs if not again this this uh, this the, again this nwc cannot be improved okay next 140 lakhs unsecured loans the company is saying we'll, we'll just just like that is saying we, we have friends and relatives we are going we are going to from those from them we are going to raise unsecured loans of 140 lakhs is it possible again who are those persons do they have the funds readily to invest in 140 lakhs in this company uh, again this is a question you need to be asking 200 lakhs last year we had an investment of group firms now we are going to withdraw 2 lakhs 2 crores are the bankers of that group company are going to accept this because this 200 crores 200 lakhs will be appearing in some unsecure because for that company for the group company this 200 lakhs is very important it's a huge amount okay will, will, will the bankers of the system firms will not object to this right is it possible is the company really going to withdraw 200 lakhs from a group company and make that company suffer? We don't know. Again, so you have to question each and everything. And if you are convinced of all those things, then only you can say, okay, the company uh, will improve the NWC. Right? Company will say 100 things. You see, they will say 100 odd things. This is how you are going to, these are the sources of funds. We are going to get so much funds. Right? This is how you are going to improve NWC. You have to, you have to critically uh, question each and every assumption. Right? So earlier uh, we said that uh, the company is going to have a 390 lakhs uh, surplus from the long term portion. Okay, that is the long term sources are greater than the long term uses by 390 lakhs. Right? The long term users are basically only, I think it's only 100 lakhs term non repayment. Right? So company is generating long term sources of 490 lakhs. It has got long term users of only 100 lakhs. So 390 lakhs is a surplus. So where this 390 is going to do? Going to go? Is going to go to a short term? Users. Why it has to go to short-term users? Because there is a short-term deficit. You see that same thing. If you, if you earlier you calculated the long-term, long-term uh, uh, surplus or deficit. Okay, by calculating long-term sources minus long-term users, you got you got a long-term surplus. Right? The same thing you do for short-term, short-term sources minus short-term users. I guarantee you, you are going to get a short-term deficit because balance sheet ultimately has to tally balance sheet. Ultimately, is made up only of only these four, four components: long-term sources, long-term users, short-term sources, short-term users. Every item in balance sheet you can cover under one of these four heads. So, if two of these long-term sources and long-term users has generated a surplus, automatically for the balance sheet to tally, it means that the short-term sources and short-term users difference has generated an equivalent amount of deficit. So, if you got this 390 lakhs plus, it definitely means you are going to get a 390 lakhs deficit. So, the long-term surplus is going to be utilized. In the short term deficit of 300 lakhs. You, you do the calculation. This is the calculation. Short term sources. You are working capital finance. Last year was 800. Now 900. Additional 100 lakhs. Short term source. Credit as 500, 600. Additional 100 lakhs. Short term source. Add up all this. You get 410. Short term sources. What are your short term uses? Receivables, inventory, and all. So 850, 800. So while your sources are only 410, you have 
uses of 800. So there's a shortfall of 390. Who is going to bridge this 390 shortfall? Your long-term surplus. So the long-term surplus will be equal to the short-term deficit. What if you didn't have a surplus? Actually, we had a deficit, right? In that case, it will be the same amount you'll get getting a surplus here. This is a case where there is diversion of funds. Your short-term surplus are going to be invested in long-term. This deficit, say for example, your long-term deficit, you got a 300 lakhs deficit. That means your long-term sources are only 200, whereas your long-term uses are 500 lakhs. How can this happen? Your long-term sources, you are you are bringing 100 lakhs your own capital, 100 lakhs bank term loan. You are, these are the only long-term sources. Whereas you have purchased land of five crores, right? How can you how can you purchase land of five crores when you are when you have only two crores long-term source? Yeah, there's a three crores deficit. Who is going to bring that here? You see. So if there's a short-term surplus, companies will be tempted to divert that into long-term deficit, right? So they should never be short-term surplus. As a banker, you should never allow this to happen. This is basically a problem of over finance. Why, why should a company have sub short term surplus? When will, a, when will a company have short term surplus? When more than what is required for the short term uses, like your uh, current assets, your inventory, data, or whatever it is, more than that is required, you are financing. As a banker, you are financing. Now the company has short term surplus. Even after meeting its current assets, your short term uses, it's, it's got some surplus funds. What will do with this? It obviously divert to long term, uh, long term users. So that's why, long term users. So that's why, as a banker, if a company requires CC limit say 100 lakhs. You, you should you should only sanction up to 100 lakhs. Don't sanction 150 lakhs, 200 lakhs. More than that is required. Right? You could do you could be doing this for your targets and all, but this is a very dangerous precedent because what will happen? The, the surplus from the company this will be diverted to the long term uses. Right? There'll be diversion of funds. Right? So so you should also congratulate yourself at this point of stage because you have uh, in the process you have also learned the funds flow statement. Right? This is exactly what funds flow statement is, right? Let us club these two tables, uh, the long term uh, surplus table which we had earlier and the short term, uh, the short term deficit table, right? You'll get this table, right? See this? This is nothing but the, this is nothing but your funds flow statement. So, how you draw up a funds flow statement is, you take up all your long term sources, you take up all your long term uses, you find the difference, A minus C, that will be a long term surplus. Then you take up all your short term sources and your short term uses you find the difference that is b minus uh, d you'll get a short term deficit these two will be always equal right so you want a scenario where there is always long term surplus right you want the difference between long term sources and long term uses to be positive that means there is no diversion of funds however if it is the other way around if there is long term deficit and a short term surplus there is a diversion of funds so funds flow statement is a way of tracking the diversion of funds okay funds flow statement is a, a way of tracking the diversion of funds. If there is long term surplus, it means there is no diversion of funds. If there is a long term deficit, then you have to investigate once again. Then you go and see whether the, uh, the minimum NWC is there or not. If the minimum NWC is not there, that is the current ratio is not as per the minimum norm, then there is diversion of funds. Okay. So this is how you drop the uh, funds flow statement. So to wrap up, wrap up this segment, uh, surplus of long term funds over long term use, that is, that is nothing but the increase in NWC. Right? That will be always equal to the short term of short term funds and short term uses that is your long term uh, surplus will always be equal to your short term deficit in case there is no diversion of funds otherwise your long term uh, deficit will be equal to your short term surplus in case of a uh, diversion of funds okay right and whatever that figure that figure will always be the will be the your increase or decrease in nwc right i think we, we can also uh, cover up uh, the next segment a very short segment uh, just in a couple of minutes we'll close this uh, in sequence 8.11 uh, 8 we will be discussing about supervision and follow up in, in the earlier uh, chapter on term loans we, we discussed about uh, how to follow up right what are the term loan uh, follow up mechanisms the, after the disbursement during the disbursement what you have to do after disbursement how you go after, after disbursement how you going to monitor the uh, progress of the project right so similarly in uh, CC in your working capital limit also uh, banks will be undertaking a lot of supervising supervision uh, methods two, two most important things are the MSOD and the QI statements. These are also known as FFR. In some banks, it's known as FFR statement. So, so what MSOD uh, does is, so CC limit, you're working at limit, CC or SOD, you're going to renew for one year. So this company is going to, you're going to uh, see only after one year. So you don't know what's going to happen in this one year because balance sheet is an annual report, you know, only once in a year you're going to get 
So banks have devised a mechanism where, where they say for, for some borrows, say for say a cutoff of, uh, say, for, say for, again, it varies from bank to bank. Say for example, uh, for a company who is availing limits of more than one crore, the company might, the bank might say, you, you submit MSOD. MSOD is a statement that is submitted at monthly intervals, okay. It will be having a, a specific format. What it basically tells you is, it gives you what is the production for that month, for that particular month. Say for example, we are in June. So for this month, right, it is going to tell us what is the production for this month, only for this month, okay. And then the cumulative production, that is from April, of this financial year, April, May, June. These three months put together, what is the cumulative production. Similarly for sales, sales for this month, cumulative sales. So what it does is, it, 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 it allows the bank to track the performance of the company. So last year, when the company has come for renewal, it, so it has said, we will achieve a turnover of uh, 1000 lakhs, right. So the, based on this uh, assumption, the, comp the bank believed this and they enhanced the limit. Okay, the company has and has a CC limit from 2 crores to 3 crores based on this. So this was in say for example in March, March 31st the, the bank has enhanced the limits. Now what the bank will do? It will ask to submit monthly statements, April, May, June. So in April the company, so roughly if 1000 lakhs is the turnover of one year, uh, what we are saying is basically the company should have made some nine, 90 lakhs, right? Around 90 lakhs, 80 to 90 lakhs per month. So that it will be reached the, it will reach the uh, uh, the year year target of 1000 lakhs, so 90 lakhs. Say for example, the company has made only 60 lakhs in April, 70 lakhs, no, 65 lakhs. Now, now the company has submitted the MSOD for June. So now you see this statement, okay. Uh, the sales are around the 60 to 70 lakhs range, okay. Put together, what is this? Around 2 crores. So now 3 months are already over, 1 quarter, right. So based on this trend, maybe the company will reach around 8 crores. It is not going to reach that thousand. Again, something might happen in the coming quarters. Uh, there are seasonal industries. There, are, say for example, in jewelry uh, business, there will be some uh, festival season. So, okay, this may not. This might pick up, but this is a an indication to the bank that maybe the company is going to fall short of the target. It's an indication. So, company can, the uh, the bank can uh, put in place some corrective mechanisms, right? Some corrective mechanisms. This, this doesn't mean the company is going. Bank is going to restrict operation. But if it is the situation is really serious, what the bank can do is it can restrict the operations to eight crores. It can do that, right? The bank has the uh, powers to do that. If the if it, if it finds that if it finds that the operations are not up to the projected level, maybe the company the company doesn't require ten crores working capital limit. It can uh, uh, restrict the operations to eight crores. So MSO is a a good way to uh, track the performance of the company month on month, right? So MSO will also give besides the production sales, it also will give the information on inventory receivables create us every information which you can ask for right so based on this you can also calculate the dp right you you, you should always uh, when when reviewing msod statements you, you should always uh, correlate the msod the statement the company gives with the uh, operation performance and this you'll getting in the cbs from your computer right from the operations of the company you just check, check the operation what the how are the operations of the company is the account being operated regularly right what are the credits that are coming to the company right what are the credits that are coming right so what is the minimum outstanding, maximum outstanding, your credit submissions, all this stuff, right? So there should be correlation with these, these two, okay? So MSOD gives a very rosy picture, right? Sales are so much, sales are so two, 2 crores, you know? Whereas your credit submission, you know, the, the credits is the account, there are no credits. So either the either this is bogus or maybe the operations are being rooted elsewhere. So you should always compare the MSOD with the operations of the uh, account. One more statement is the QA statement. Uh, QS statement is a quarterly statement. MSOD is a monthly statement, right? QS is a, a quarterly statement again stipulated above a cutoff, say for example, say two crores or three crores, right? So for companies availing limits above this cutoff, they will submit this QS. QS is a quarterly statement. So basically, it, it, it we want as a banker to track the funds flow position. That's the diversion of funds, okay? We want to know how the funds of the have, have been uh, utilized. So the moment of NWC, which we j just discussed, will be an indication of the uh, diversion of funds. So QS statement will be uh, telling you whether they have been in diversion, whether the short term funds have been used for long term uses. Okay. So these two statements again, Q QS uh, actually will be having two QS. Okay. Uh, one will be submitted quarterly intervals. So this is this will be submitted four times a year. Then one more QS will be submitted half yearly. Okay. The format is different for uh, these two, these two, two times a year. Format will be different for these two. Again, the basically the point is to track the performance of the company because the renewal happens one year, once in a year. You don't know what's what's happening in this account and what's happening in the company during this one year because if you if you renew in March and again you see the account in uh, next year March that is not good credit monitoring okay you want to uh, see how the company is doing it at a at a periodic 
uh, basis. So MSOD will give you the uh, performance of the company on a monthly basis. QIS will give you the performance of the company on a uh, quarterly basis, right? Besides this, you also have uh, other uh, other uh, follow-up mechanisms, right? Uh, say, for example, your unit visits. So once in a quarter, maybe you can go to the unit and physically see what is the uh, progress. You can physically see what is the uh, operations like, right? Uh, you can you also have something called stock audit, right? Stock audit will stock audit is it done once in a year, once in a year. So there are various other uh, follow-up mechanisms besides the MSOD QS. So the aim is you should not be uh, seeing the 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 company and the financial of the company once in a year. Even between, even between the at least at least once in a quarter, you should be knowing what the uh, what the company, how the company is doing, how the how the account is performing. Okay. So with this, we come to end end of the segment eight point ten and eight point eleven, right? Uh, with this, we actually come to the end of the chapter on uh, uh, on work capital assessment. So till now, we have discussed a working capital assessment, what is known as fund base limits, right? So in the next chapter, chapter nine, we'll be discussing about something called non fund limits. These are also working capital limits, right? This are also working capital limits, uh, but there is a difference. They are called non-fund limits. What are they? Why are they called non-fund? Basically, they are LCs and BGs. Okay, we will discuss this in the uh, next chapter. Right? See you then.